So this is 5.4 sigma notation part one. Sigma pretty much means sum, and this is the notation, and it has a counter to it. So k equals one is our starting value, our starting counter, and k equals four is our end, and that's our upper limit. So what this means is we sum up, starting with k equals one, you plug into here and we get one squared and you sum it plus the next counter is k equals two which is two squared you replace two with k plus k equals three three squared and last but not least we end at four so we can add that up I believe the total is 30. so let's look at some other examples so here, our counter is i, so we start with the lower one, i equals 0, so it's 3 times 0, and we get 10, and I'll just leave it that way. And here, it starts at 3, ends at 3, so we're done, and if we want, we can add it up. So here I want us to pay attention, n equals zero is my counter, but there is no n here. So for n equals zero, it's 5x plus n equals one, the counter continues, it's still 5x though, that's not changing. x is a different variable than our counter n, so it doesn't get substituted. So our answer is 20x. So here, so what we're going to do here is something slightly different than we've been doing. We're going to take this sum and rewrite it with the sum starting at n equals 0. So we are going to have to do a substitution and use a new index. So this n equals 3, we want to manipulate it so it starts at 0 instead of 3. So we're going to subtract out that 3. And so here we will call this k, k equals zero. So we can see k is equal to n minus three. That's what we're gonna use. And just to double check, again, we use this, we plug in n equals three, and then we get k equals zero as my starter. So we are going to change For the lower limit, we have n equals 3, and we can plug in n equals 3 here. So we knew that. That's how we came up with this equation. But what about our upper limit? Again, this is 5, and clearly this is our counter is the variable n. So we're going to use n equals 5 to plug in to k equals five minus three right here. So k equals two. Now for this, we need our counter of k. So we can use this instead of n, we can take that equation and solve for n and replace n here with k plus three. So instead of n, it's k plus three plus one which we can see cleaning it up. And let's write that out now. If I plug in zero, I get two to the fourth. And we go all the way up till two. And we can see this is the same sum. I have a new counter at zero. And we've done what we've been asked. So just in general, we can call our term ak. So that would be a1 starts at 8, 1, and you add it all the way to an. So again, using the ak as a general sum, 
We have a theorem that pretty much says if we have a sum and there's a constant in here, well, think about a constant being in front of each of them. It would be in front of each term, so you can factor that out. The other part of the theorem says if we have two different terms, well, we can basically distribute that sum. Uh, I'm going to prove this really fast because just exactly the way I said it is how we prove it. So just CA1. I don't need to write the, the counter underneath every time. If you can keep track of it without it. Well, now we see we have a C in common with each of them. Factor that out. And you can see this is our general sum. So we can rewrite it using the notation. And that is QED. We have shown that this is equal to that. That's part A. So now what we're going to do, there's nothing in front of these pluses. So we could just drop the parentheses basically. And we're going to rearrange it and add all the A's, add up all the B's. And we can see here, this is our general sum of AI or AK. And this is our general sum with BK. So now we have proved part B that those are both equal. Another theorem. So here's three formulas that we'll need in the next part of the video. And it's basically if we have the sum of adding all the numbers up to n, this is the formula we can use. And same thing for k squared and for k to the third. And by the way, this is called closed form. Now I'm not going to prove all three of these, but I am going to prove the first one because it's a pretty clever proof. And this technique we'll be seeing in the coming weeks and next semester, you'll use it in Calc 2. So instead of just writing N, I'm going to write the one two before it. And I'm going to also write the same thing. I'm just going to copy this, but I'm going to write it backwards. So n first. So we're basically going to add the two lines together. So when we add on the left side, we get two of these. We get basically one of them plus one of them is two of them. We get one plus n. Um, and actually, I'm going to write it as n plus 1. Same thing. The second term, it's 2 plus n minus 1, which is n plus 2 minus 1 plus 1. n and then plus 3 minus 2 is plus 1. So it's dot, dot, dot going on in this fashion. This plus this. 3 plus negative 2 is plus 1. Hopefully you can see the pattern. And for our last two... And how many times are we doing this? How many terms are there? 1 to n. This is n times. So really, that's just classic multiplication. It's n times n plus 1, because that's what that means. You add a number repeated times, n times. And let's not forget, on our left side, it's this. Just copying this down. And now let's isolate this sum of k by dividing both sides by 2, which proves our number 1. That's what the sum of k is equal to. Let's do an example. So we want to find the closed form of this. We're going to have to use the formula, that one of the formulas that we've found, but not right away. We're going to use the theorems that we've come across also. So we're going to go ahead and just change the index right away to 1 
because if we're going to be using those formulas, the index starts with 1, okay? So not 0, 1. It's the same process, though. So let's write that out. So we, this is our starting. So it's the same formula, k minus 5 equals 0. So that's our formula. We're changing our index to n equals k minus 5. I set n equal to k minus 5, and that'll work. That's our formula that will work. Uh, remember, we will also need the alternate version where k equals n plus 5. Again, we're just adding 5 to both sides. So we'll use both of these to change it. So I'm basically, I want 1 on that side because I want that to be my starter. So this will be called n. So my formula is going to be n equals k minus 4. So let's just check that. My start is my lower limit was k equals 5, so now it's n equals 5 minus 4, which is 1. Yep. And my upper limit, so it's 15, now 11. And instead of that k, solve for k there, we replace k with n plus 4, clean it up. Okay, there we have it. So just if you wanted to, since those formulas are in terms of k, we don't have to, but if we like to use the counter of k, we can just switch n equals k. k equals 1. I'm just switching n for k if you like k better. So not necessary. You can keep it in terms of n, but straight up switch n for k. It's the same series. So now let's use those properties. We have two terms. Let's go ahead and distribute it. We have a constant here. We can bring that constant out. Now we can bring the constant out here too. It's not necessary, but it's sometimes easier. If you bring that out, we're left with a one, because five times one. <laughs> and now we can see here, we have a formula to use. And this is my n equals 11. So it's that formula, and we actually have an, a value for n. So this is going to be 2 on the outside, and then our n is 11 times 12 all over 2 plus 5. Well, what do you think this is? It's k equals 1 plus 1. That's 1 plus 1 plus 1. How many times? 11 times. So that's times 11. That's the 5 there. And so just do the math now. This cancels with that. Plug it into a calculator, and that's what we get. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.